rinsing dishes before they go in the dishwasher? Well, Cascade Platinum has 50% more cleaning power, so you don't have to. Its food-seeking enzymes break down food into particles so small it can flow right down the drain. Plus, it's powerful enough for the quick wash cycle. Cascade Platinum with 50% more cleaning power. Still tracing our family roots? Yeah. Just look for the Dust Bowl elbows. We have those? Oh, yeah. But Jurgen's Original Cherry Almond Lotion keeps away the elbow drought. Smell it. I love it. This one had a lot of husbands. And hydrating coconut lotion. Jurgen's. Olivia Rodrigo, not only a first-time MTV VMA nominee, she's also a performer. Yes, she is. Olivia joins Camila Cabello, Lil Nas X, Lord, and Machine Gun Kelly as the first artist announced to perform at this year's show. It will air live from Barclays Center on Sunday, September 12th. And by the way, you know what happens the next day? I do. What happens? Dr. Phil kicks off his 20th season. Well, thank you for being here. You know, you're happening now. Having cancer during the pandemic can be scary, but doctors here at the Start Center for Cancer Care have you covered. Their push to get the vaccine and how their advice changed the mind of one patient about getting the vaccine. San Antonio Independent School District canceled all upcoming football scrimmages. We have district reaction coming up in sports. I'll have a look at your updated rain chances for the remainder of the work in school week and an update on what's going on out in the tropics. News at 5 starts right now. Vaccine hesitancy, it is still a big concern in our community. And today we're focusing on those who are battling severe illnesses. Doctors at the Start Center for Cancer Care strongly pushing for the use of masks and urging vaccinations. Our Jaffney Gray spoke with a patient who says though he was hesitant at first, he's had a change of heart. Honestly, I didn't want to get it. A vaccine will trigger my condition. That condition is a rare blood disorder called PNH. If untreated, it causes tiredness and blood clotting. 66-year-old Warren Larson has been a patient at the Start Center for Cancer Care for years. At the start of the pandemic, his concern level about the virus was high. It's like a one-two punch for me. Oncologist and hematologist doctor with the Start Center, Dr. Stephen Calter, says they have very strong recommendations for patients like Larson. Limit the amount of time spent to going to the store and elsewhere. So far, only 190 patients contracted the virus and fortunately all have recovered and did not require hospitalization. But I don't think this should set up a false sense of security. Which is why, despite the hesitancy, they are highly recommending people battling severe illnesses like cancer or blood disorders get the vaccine. He goes, you'd be worse off if you were to get the virus without that vaccine. Some patients have had reactions to the vaccine. In general, these symptoms are not that severe and tend to last less than a day. For Larson, who didn't catch COVID but got the J&J &J vaccine, he had a high fever, but after a couple of days. I actually uh, won a golf tournament. <laughs> like many, he is concerned about the rise in Delta variant cases, but he remains positive. I would just say, listen to your doctor. At the Start Center, doctors are providing the Moderna vaccine due to the lengthy shelf life. Today, they started providing a third booster shots for patients going through active treatments. Their goal is to give out at least 300, hopefully more booster shots by the end of the week. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Good to know. All students, staff, and visitors at Northside ISD must now wear masks when they head back to the classroom on Monday. The Board of Trustees voting unanimously to issue the temporary mask mandate last night. The mandate will go into effect on the first day of school and applies to all those indoors. SAISD issuing a similar mask mandate. However, they also require staff to be fully vaccinated by October 15th. A uh, civil court judge ruled in favor, civil district court judge rather, ruled in favor of Bear County, allowing Metro Health directives that allow and require masks indoors at public schools. He represents a big part of the border. U.S. Representative Henry Cuellar speaking today about how the Delta variant is affecting cases and vaccinations there. He was in San Antonio today and says, just like the rest of the country, he's very concerned. Quayer says the hospitals at the border have ICU space. They have equipment. They don't have staff, though. However, he says a lot of the area he represents have very high vaccination rates. I don't understand why a mask has become such a political issue. I do not understand that. Uh, and, and we need to do that. We need to wear the mask um, on the border. I can say this, um, you know, our vaccinations in Laredo and some of the other border areas they're so much higher than the state and they're higher than the national level. Representative Cuellar goes on to say getting the COVID vaccine is similar to getting the vaccines that are required. 
for kids to go back to school. The call to get COVID booster shots for all Americans getting louder and louder as U.S. health officials continue to see the Delta variant cases surging across the country. The CDC director and other leaders outlining a new plan for Americans to get an extra dose eight months after you got your second shot of either Pfizer or Moderna. The doses could begin as soon as the week of September 20th. Those who received the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, though, are going to have to also get an extra dose, but officials are still waiting on more data on that. The FDA evaluating the plan for safety and effectiveness. New at five, it's a shooting investigation filled with unknowns. San Antonio police say a gun sale turned violent in a southwest Bear County neighborhood. Police were called out to that shooting just before 2.30 at a home on Somerset Road, not too far from I-35 and Loop 410's interchange. The two groups who were meeting at the home had an altercation. Police say it turned into a shootout. They believe at least two people were injured. One person arrived at Bamsey injured from that incident. Police say there could be another injury as well. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office still working to identify a man who was run over and killed this morning. That crash happening just after midnight on I-35, not far from O'Connor Road on the northeast side. San Antonio police said the man was actually walking on the highway when he was hit by an SUV. The man pronounced dead at the scene. The driver did stop after the crash and is not expected to face any charges. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help identifying the man you see on your screen. He's accused of assaulting a park police officer from last Friday. The incident happened on Southwest 36th Street near Cuellar Park on the west side. SAPD says the officer was investigating a stolen vehicle. The officer tried to arrest the man who allegedly resisted arrest, injuring the officer during the confrontation. The man then ran away. Anyone with information is being asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. It is 210-224-STOP. A Universal City man facing charges in connection with the breach at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. 52-year-old Stephen Capuccio is charged with assaulting, resisting, or impeding certain officers, obstruction of an official proceeding, and civil disorder, along with a few other charges. Court documents state Capuccio was captured on body-worn camera footage and surveillance video on the lower west terrace of the Capitol. He's also seen allegedly trying to rip off the mask of an officer pinned against doors by other rioters. He eventually did rip that mask off. More than 570 people have been arrested in connection with the insurrection. With the Taliban now controlling Afghanistan, the thousands who helped the U.S. are now fearing for their lives. So do their loved ones here who worry about their safety there. But Jesse de Gallardo says they have taken their concerns to Congressman Joaquin Castro, and she breaks down what he calls his plan of action. Yeah, I'm very happy to work with Marines, serve my country and a U.S. country or America. Afghan interpreters who helped America's military in Afghanistan communicate with the locals are among the tens of thousands of others fearing they'll be abandoned and forgotten by the U.S. and targeted by the Taliban. Something like 80 to 90,000 people who directly helped the United States government when we were there. Only a fraction of those folks have gotten out so far. Instead of the horrifying scenes of desperate Afghans clinging to the American cargo planes, many now surround the airport in Kabul, waiting and hoping they'll be among those who'll be leaving Afghanistan. Non-stop evacuation flights are underway since the U.S. military has regained control of the airport. In hopes of getting their loved ones on board those flights, families here have asked Congressman Joaquin Castro for his help. So a lot of it is us advocating on behalf of families to get people over here. Despite their years of service to the U.S., Castro says untangling the red tape in getting them special immigrant visas takes time. Yet many Afghans say time is running out before they pay the price for helping Americans. Look, I don't blame people for being fearful and nervous and scared for their lives. Uh, as this new government comes in. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Firefighters facing dangerous conditions as they struggle to contain the spread. One fire tearing through a small Northern California forest town, prompting a massive power company to cut electricity to thousands of homes. ABC's Morgan Norwood in Los Angeles with the latest. 
Wildfires ripping through Northern California, exploding inside. The Caldor fire painting the skies orange with smoke and ash, at times pitch black in the middle of the day as thick smoke swallows the surroundings. This has been an incident that's developed really quickly and has grown extremely fast. It's outpaced the models. ABC's Kena Whitworth on the ground. The winds are heavy and they're shooting spot fires some two, even five miles ahead. And here's an example of where this fire crossed the road and went straight up this hill. The Caldor fire prompting evacuations for nearly 200,000 in El Dorado County. The flames have already destroyed 50 homes in the small town of Grizzly Flats. I physically saw my home, which is a pile of ash, which is on an acre of property in a 13, 1600 foot home. Uh, it's, it's a pile of ash. Everybody uh, on my block is a pile of ash. Meanwhile, the Dixie Fire now marching toward mountain communities, a major utility company already shutting off power to nearly 50,000 customers to prevent wind gusts from damaging power lines and sparking more blazes. California Governor Gavin Newsom urging more action on climate change as scientists warn these fires will grow more frequent and intense as the world warms. We have to do more and we have to do better as it relates to actively managing our forests, uh, vegetation management efforts, our prepositioning of assets. And the fire danger continues. Officials in the Bay Area declaring critical fire conditions and issuing an air quality alert as that smoke from those northern wildfires continue to move into the region. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, hope you've had a wonderful Wednesday. Certainly hot and muggy out there, but a few of our weather watchers did call in some lower rain totals, mainly from earlier in the day, like Rock Springs. Uh, Brianna, there 0.41 inches of rain, uh, less than a tenth of an inch up near Bernie and Leon Springs, almost a quarter inch of rain from Canyon Lake. And again, that was mainly from early this morning. There have been a couple of thunder showers out there this afternoon, but it does look like activity is really lifting north and east away from San Antonio. Antonio and Bear County. Nonetheless, we'll hold on to about a 20% chance of a spotty pop up thunder shower through about sunset. After that, rain chances really fall out, out of the forecast, not only for the rest of the day today, but also for the remainder of the work and school week. We'll take a look at your full forecast, get you a check of what's going on in the tropics coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. In your health headlines today, there are countless benefits when it comes to quitting smoking, and we now know there's one more. ABC's Ike Ajachi tells us how quitting smoking could help you survive COVID-19. Smokers have a higher chance of developing severe illness and dying from COVID. Nearly 40% of men and nearly 10% of all women around the world are smokers. COVID-19 affects the lungs and causes low oxygen levels in many patients. In fact, researchers say smokers may have a 50% higher chance of developing severe COVID and dying. The World Health Organization launched a Commit to Quit campaign in 29 countries, including the United States. This campaign is designed to support smokers who are trying to kick the habit by giving them tools they need. The Quit Challenge gives people daily notifications of tips and encouragement for up to six months. To sign up for the campaign, visit the World Health Organization's website at www.who.int. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ike Ajachi, ABC News. It's still ahead, what if we told you eating healthier could be as easy as steaming your food? The options you have with this cooking technique coming up. New at five, summertime cooking. It should be light and easy, right? Steaming meals, a great way to put a healthy plate on the table and clean up is super easy. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has some ways to take steamed food from bland to bold. Ann Moffat Ryan is into healthy cooking and likes the versatility of steaming. I usually enjoy cooking chicken and fish and vegetables with steam. I was thinking yesterday that I hadn't done an artichoke in a really long time and I needed to do one. Steaming is a great way to cook without adding fat and calories, and it retains nutrients that could be lost when boiling. And you don't have to sacrifice flavor. Whether you use a steam basket, an electric cooker, or a bamboo steamer, here are five ways to take steaming from boring to savory. Instead of steaming with water, infuse with other liquids like broth or beer or wine, even flavored vinegars. Avoid thick liquids, though. They can burn. 
You can also flavor the liquid. Think lemon peel, dill, or garlic. You can steam seafood with white wine, onion, lemon juice, and herbs. A bit of sesame oil goes a long way, and chicken or potatoes can be flavored with rosemary or garlic. Spice your foods before steaming. Brush on the juices and pat the ground spices. Marinating before steaming adds flavor and tenderizes the meat. A mix of soy sauce, sesame oil, rice wine, vinegar, and lemon juice for fish, or try carrots with olive oil and spices. Finally, try using parchment paper or foil to seal an envelope around food and create a steam in the oven. Thin cuts of seafood are ideal for cooking this way. Surround the fish with a little oil, some greens, veggies, and herbs that will build up steam while it's baking. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Kind of steamy outside. Oh, yeah. Today, so, yeah. you know, whether you cook or <laughs> live in it, whatever, you know. I'd prefer Woodlawn Lake. With it. Looks, still looks pretty green around Woodlawn. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and 97, it looks like, was our preliminary high temperature for today at the airport. And that would tie um, the hottest we've been so far this summer. So we still have yet to touch 100 at the airport. So that's always positive. That's just a... It's just a mental thing to kind of help you out. But yeah, it is steamy out there. Our air temperatures are for most of us in the mid to upper 90s. Our dew points are elevated, so that has our heat index readings this afternoon for a lot of places above 100 degrees. You'll notice just a touch cooler. I, I'll use the word cooler loosely up in Rock Springs because 84 and humid, still pretty warm. Uh, 103 down in Catula. So things are pretty quiet out there, and I do think our window to see any pop up shower or thunderstorms today is really starting to close here, especially as we get closer and closer to sunset. There was some activity off to the east of 35, and there has also been a little bit of redevelopment off to the west of Del Rio and Eagle Pass in the higher terrain of northern Mexico. Uh, Del Rio, it looks like that rain that was to to the west of you has kind of fizzled out. So uh, you're in the clear for now, but Eagle Pass, you may have a couple of storms try to wander your direction over the next couple of hours. Um, and then the activity otherwise has been focused north and east of San Antonio, and there hasn't really been any regeneration south of I-10 and Highway 90. So that's what makes me think you can see here on Futurecast. We don't have this activity out there currently, so uh, that it's what makes me think our rain window is really, really rapidly starting to close here. Nonetheless, through about sunset, I can't roll out a pop up shower or non severe storm, but the majority of us will be rain free this evening. Anything that can pop up over the next couple of hours will fizzle out after sunset after we lose the heat of the day. Uh, tomorrow will be a rain free day. We may have some more afternoon development in the higher terrain of Mexico there, but otherwise our rain chances will start to bottom out tomorrow. Uh, and even into Friday, you'll notice a few more coastal showers possible as we get into Friday. Essentially for our friends south and east of San Antonio, closer to the Gulf of Mexico, you could see a stray shower the next few afternoons, uh, but majority of us will be rain free for the next several days all the way through the upcoming weekend. Uh, the reason for the spotty rain today, the rain from earlier in the, in the morning and also yesterday's activity uh, was this short wave here that you can see really nicely on water vapor imagery. It's a nice little dip in the jet stream that mainly is sitting over North Texas. This is starting to be pulled north and east away from us. So that's why we'll see our rain chances really bottom out tonight and stay minimal all the way through the upcoming weekend. We actually have a little ridge of high pressure kind of a mini heat high, if you will, that will actually start to settle in tomorrow and will be with us through the upcoming weekend early next week. So that's why we drop rain chances out of the forecast here through the upcoming weekend. So that will put the focus of our weather forecast here back on summertime sizzle highs will be in the mid to upper 90s for uh, the foreseeable future here. We're going to have some elevated heat indices in the afternoon. So if you'll be spending a lot of time outdoors, as always, just stay hydrated and uh, take frequent breaks. Out in the tropics, we've got two systems that we're watching. We've talked a lot about Hurricane Grace. This will be approaching the Yucatan Peninsula tonight and tomorrow, and then eventually will wash out over Mexico. That will not have any impacts on our forecast. And then we've got Tropical Storm Henri south of Bermuda. Looks like this is going to make a sharp turn off to the north over the next few days and as we get into the weekend and early next week could affect portions of New England. We'll keep you updated there, but in the meantime, no tropical impacts for the Texas Gulf Coast at this time. This evening, mainly just hot and humid, low, low chance of a pop up thunder shower through about sunset. After that, rain chances drop out of the forecast tomorrow. A hot afternoon highs in the mid to upper 90s heat index 100 plus, but thankfully we'll have a good breeze in place tomorrow afternoon and also for the next several days, guys. Thank you, Katie.
All right, there is some concern that when announcements like this are made by SAISD, canceled games could follow. Yeah, and as of right now, SAISD has no plans to cancel games, at least in week one. They seem to be safe, and they're canceling the scrimmages because they want to keep the regular season alive. SAISD has canceled football scrimmages. We've got those details coming up. Plus, our BGC preview takes us to Hondo, where we visit with the Owls. Coming up. With COVID-19 cases on the rise, San Antonio Independent School District decided to cancel football scrimmages, seven total against non-district schools. They will hold scrimmages between SAISD teams this weekend, per SAISD Athletics Director Brian M. Clancy. He told us the reason behind this is to limit exposure to students from other districts that are not following the same COVID protocols and procedures that they are following in SAISD. This will also give SAISD time to continue their vaccination efforts and allow for ample opportunity for their student athletes to get vaccinated prior to their sports season. So clearly they're trying to avoid a repeat of last season when varsity volleyball and cross country started later than usual in mid October, followed by football kicking off the last uh, kicking off the season during the last week of October. That is just a long time. Here's what Mr. Clancy told us this afternoon. Quote, we have every intent to play our scheduled regular season games for all of our sports. So we are taking extra precautions now with the hopes and expectations that our student athletes can enjoy their athletic experience this school year without interruptions. End quote. Let's make a stop on Hondo now as we continue our big game coverage previews. Led by head coach Joe Carey, the Hondo Owls went 10 and 2 last season, advancing to the second round of the playoffs and they went 5 and 0 in district 15 4 a division two to claim yet another district championship. The Owls have 11 starters returning six on offense and five on defense. So some of the names to watch this season include running back and linebacker Carson Winchester, quarterback Caden English and running back defensive back Martavius Patterson. Dave Campbell's Texas football predicts Hondo will repeat as district 15 4 a D2 champs. Anytime you have some success it, it it gives the gives the younger kids a little taste of what that's like, and um, it, it drives them and motivates them to, to stay hungry to want to do it again. So, uh, these kids that were part of last year's team um, know how that felt to, to win a district championship and get into the playoffs. So, um, they're excited and they want to continue the tradition. I think we're going to do awesome. We've been working really hard. Uh, practices have been going really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I expect to win district. I think we have all the capabilities of doing it. I think we're going to do awesome, really. Uh, we have a really good senior class. I think the juniors and sophomores all in varsity will help us out this year because, I mean, we need them. Hondo kicks off the season at home in San Antonio Memorial Friday, August 27th at 7.30 p.m. And coming up at six, guys, I'll have those seven uh, canceled football scrimmages by SAISD. Right. It's not inner squad scrimmages. I mean, there's scrimmages school against school. Yes, there's just non district teams they don't want to scrimmage with right now. Great. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. This evening through about sunset pop up thunder shower not out of the question, but most of us will stay rain free hot day tomorrow high of 96, but the heat index will likely be several degrees above 100 during the heat of the afternoon. Thankfully, a nice breeze in place tomorrow. Steve Ursula. Thank you so much, Katie, and thank you for watching the News of Five with us. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6.